we begin by thanking the organizers for uh, holding this meeting so regularly and also for the chance to speak here so the title of my talk is run and tumble motion with step like response to a stochastic input this work is done with shubhrato deb who is a student at snbo center this is part of his thesis work uh, there are many organisms in nature which move around using run tumble motility and uh, satya had already introduced this run tumble motion let me therefore just briefly tell you one sentence that during a run you expect the organism to swim along roughly a straight line and during a tumble you expect it to just randomly rotate about itself without much net displacement so it moves like it runs for some distance then tumbles for some time then again runs for some time again tumbles again runs in a new direction like this and the switching between this run mode and tumble mode are controlled by some flagella which are associated with the cell so here i have listed a bunch of microorganisms they have multiple flagella associated with the cell and at the base of each flagella there is a small motor when this motor rotates in the counter clockwise direction the cell runs and when the motor is rotated in the clockwise direction the cell tumbles there are many other variation for example for this particular cell there is a single flagella and either it can rotate in the counter clockwise direction or it can stop rotating giving rise to run and tumble motion respectively and sometimes you also have some other eukaryotic cells where uh, instead of rotation the flagella shows some beating pattern different for run and tumble in all these cases the flagellar motion actually controls the switching between run mode and tumble mode and the flagellar motion in turn is controlled by the intracellular reactions something is happening inside the cell that is controlling the flagellar motion and in many cases it is found that this dependence is very sensitive out of all these microorganism the most well studied one is e coli and here i have shown the experimental data where uh, so inside the e coli cell there is a special protein which is called qip it is responsible for increasing the clockwise bias and this is the protein that is responsible for causing the cell to tumble so here this is an experimental data where the qip concentration is plotted as a function of uh, clockwise bias and as you can see this is a very sharp dependence almost a sigmoidal dependence so this brings us to the question that we are interested in so this is the question that what happens when a run and tumble random walker shows a very sharp switching response to some stochastic input signal so we address the question by studying a very simple run tumble random walker model and the switching probabilities between run mode and tumble mode they depend on some stochastic signal and we also consider since we want to study the simplest possible case we also consider the switching probability can take only two values 0 and 1 now with this model you can now see it clearly that an infinitely sharp response would mean what that as soon as the input signal crosses a threshold value there is a switch however there is a problem here because even if the input signal is showing tiny fluctuations around the threshold there is an infinite number of switches happening and that is not physical so therefore we introduce a small range of width delta around the threshold value and we assume that two switches run to tumble and tumble to run these two switches happen at the two ends of the range okay so this uh, picture will make it clearer it is uh, this is a time series of a certain signal some stochastic signal and the purple color corresponds to the tumble mode and the green color corresponds to the run mode so as you can see, and these are two ranges that i have shown so as you can see below this range everything is the cell can only run above this range cell can only tumble and the switches are happening whenever the signal is trying to exit the range and more specifically every time the signal yt exits the range through a boundary which is different from the which it had entered the range in there is a switch and we are interested in the question how fluctuations present in this input signal affect the motion and we will consider two scenarios here one is this signal fluctuation that is an independent stochastic process and the other is the signal dynamics in turn depends on the dynamics of the run tumble uh, walker now since these questions are motivated from actually study of e coli we choose 
the input signal to be actually the experimentally characterized fluctuations of QIP level. So E. coli is very well studied, so experimentally people have seen how this QIP protein fluctuates in time and there are also nice theoretical models available to describe that. So we start with that. Then the two scenarios I described that correspond to the two cases. So if you place an E. coli in an environment where there is nutrient is showing some uh, special variation, then the QIP dynamics depends on the local nutrient concentration, therefore it involves the current cell position. On the other hand, if the cell is moving in a homogeneous nutrient environment, then QIP fluctuates independently irrespective of where the cell is. And in fact, I will show in the second case, we can calculate many things exactly. So this is the time evolution equation for uh, this Y. I am not going into the details of how to derive this equation, I will just use this as a um, starting point. And this eta t is a Gaussian white noise, it has a strength lambda. This equation can be derived using the biochemical pathway inside the cell. Notice one thing that here we have considered switching probability can take two values 0 and 1, which means there is no additional source of stochasticity in the run tumble motion. So uh, for a given time series yt, it is already fixed when the cell is going to run and when the cell is going to tumble. And this actually makes it possible for us to calculate things exactly because now we know at the end beginning of each run signal should have this value y not minus delta by 2 and whenever it reaches for the first time this value y not plus delta by 2 that is the up, upper bound of the range there is a run to tumble switch. So therefore these switching events are like fast passage processes in the signal space. And uh, so uh, this is the, uh, actually we can solve for Py, the probability distribution of the signal variable itself. I am um, not going into the details of this. And here in presence of a homogeneous environment, this is the mean run length, mean tumble length as a function of uh, noise strength, signaling noise. So mean run length, mean tumble length are just like mean fast passage time. So continuous line set analy analytical results which show good agreement with numerics. And here is the data for uh, run length distribution and tumble length distribution. We don't know how to calculate these distributions exactly in the time domain, but we can calculate their Laplace transform and they show good agreement with our numerics. And as you can see here, as noise increases, the, cell, uh, the uh, signal takes less time to cross this range. Therefore, these peaks shift towards left. This is the time evolution equation for y in presence of a nutrient concentration gradient. Here Cx is the nutrient concentration and here we have used a uh, linear nutrient profile. So in this case unfortunately we don't know how to solve it exactly. So we use numerical simulation but uh, this is one interesting result where we have plotted the position distribution of the random walker and as you can see just like the nutrient concentration this also shows a linear dependence. Now imagine if you place an E. coli actually in a similar nutrient environment, it shows a tendency to show, I mean, be present in a place where there are more nutrients available. So we see that even with our very simple run tumble description, this chemotactic ability has not been impaired. So this is the conclusion. So uh, the model that we have studied is much simpler than actual E. coli motion. So for E. coli, although we find a sigmoidal dependence, but nevertheless it's a continuous dependence. The tumbling bias shows a continuous variation with QIP concentration, whereas we just assume that switching probability directly jumps from 0 to 1. And that as a result, uh, there is some di difference between what we observe and what is actually known for E. coli that is uh, much more complicated. And so one can uh, expect that if you uh, consider <coughs> I mean do it gradually like start with a sigmoidal dependence, slowly vary the steepness, maybe one can find a crossover between the two. And finally this uh, result was uh, recently published in this uh, journal. So with that I would like to thank you for your attention. So any questions? Switching from run to tumble and then from tumble to run, is it symmetric? I mean, probably not, but I missed. No, I mean, it is just whenever the signal crosses that range. So if you just look at this, so this, it is, it was tumbling, 
Now, as soon as it tries to cross the range from above, it uh, tumble to run switch happens. Similarly, this green line, it was running. Whenever it tries to go above the range, then uh, run to tumble switch happens. It depends on the signal. Yes. Oh, um, no. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, one of the things that uh, E-Coli does is the chemotaxis. That is, you have some spatial gradient. Have you thought of coupling this to a spatial model where you put some chemotaxis? Yeah, yeah. Gradient? That is what the se second part was. When the uh, signal dynamics is given by this, here this Cx is the nutrient concentration. And in fact, we should see that actually it uh, even this simple model shows chemotactic signal because it is present with larger probability in a space where there is more food. So in similar thing you would expect for an E-Coli also. Oh, okay, okay. So for E. coli, the way it works is that whenever you are finding more and more nutrient, you keep running. And that tells you you are heading towards a good region, so keep going. On the other hand, if you are heading towards a bad region where uh, nutrient concentration is decreasing with time, then it um, uh, tends to tumble. So you can think of it like this protein, there was a dynamics. Now when there is a special variation of nutrient, that is also coupled to the dynamics. I won't say it like it is maintaining that protein. No, 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 no. This is a very simple description. We have not answered.